hi guys welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is abiola and in today's tutorial we'll be recreating this lovely dress you already saw the inspiration and you've seen the outcome the first time i saw this dress was when hilda bassi wore the dress and since then i have been wanting to recreate it so let's just get straight into the tutorial so let's begin the first thing i'm going to do is to divide this pattern paper into two because we do not need the full width of the pattern paper and i'm going to go ahead to tape it down then i'll proceed to draft my basic bodice pattern the first thing i'm going to mark is my shoulder width divided by two my shoulder width is 15 15 divided by two is 7.5 which is what i marked then the neck width i will be working with is 3.5 which i will go ahead to mark at this point 3.5 after which i will go ahead to mark my neck depth and i'm working with a neck depth of three inches then i'll go in with my curve driller and connect that to form a round neck okay then as usual our shoulder is not straight so we'll go down by one inch from the shoulder width and connect from that point to the neck width area okay so after doing that the next step is to mark out a uh, armhole line and to get your armhole line you divide your bust circumference by 6 plus 1.5 inches my bust circumference is 38 38 divided by 6 plus 1.5 inches gives me 7.8 and that is approximately 8 inches which is what i marked from the shoulder slope remember what we marked at the shoulder area is our shoulder width divided by 2 my shoulder width is 15 15 divided by 2 gives us 7.5 which is what we have at that point so that 7.5 is what i am going to mark at this armhole line area so what i'm going to do at this point now is to mark out that 7.5 and then i'll go ahead to join the lines to form a straight line we're just trying to get our armhole curve then i'll also go ahead to also extend the armhole line because we haven't done that yet so this is me extending the armhole line after that i'll go ahead to divide what i have on that my uh, armhole line at this point which is eight inches i'll divide that by two eight divided by two is four and on that point i'm going to go in by 0.5 inches this is us trying to form the armhole um, curve okay so on the armhole line i'm going to divide my bus circumference by 4 38 divided by 4 gives 9.5 which i went ahead to mark then i'll go ahead to connect the points to form my armhole curve i'll go ahead and use the straight part of this armhole curve to connect from the shoulder slope to this point then i'll go ahead to use the curved part to complete the curve okay as you can see so this is our armhole curve then what i'm going to do now is to add my allowance and i'll be working with one inch seam allowance so i'll proceed now to add one inch to this point now let's take our other vertical measurements i'm going to mark my bust point which is 10 inches my under bust is 13 inches okay i would mark that as well my waistline is 16.5 inches then 0.5 inch allowance okay as usual i'm going to go ahead to mark all of them again i'm going to mark my bust point which is 10 inches my under bust 13 my waistline 16.5 then allowance making it um, 17 um i marked it twice just to enable me get a straight line okay the next step is to connect the point and label this is my bust point i'll connect the next one which is my under bust and i will go ahead to label it ub as an under bust then i will connect the waistline area and label it wl which implies my waistline okay then the last line which is the allowance line this allowance is what we're going to use to join this top part to the skirt part okay so i'm going to label that a the next step is to divide my waist circumference by 4. My waist circumference is 29.5. 29.5 divided by 4 gives me 7.4 inches, which is what you can see me marking. I would also mark the same thing on the allowance line. Then I'll go ahead to add my 1 inch seam allowance because I told you guys I'll be working with 1 inch 
seam allowance after marking that one inch i'll proceed to connect the point from the waistline to the armhole line just like you see me doing so guys for this dress you can decide not to add any dart at all and it will still come out nice but for me i would like to add a dart to give that extra fit okay so i'll go ahead now to add one extra inch allowance to this um to the waist area for the dart but guys one thing i'm going to do is i will not add any dart to the front bodies just keep watching and you understand what i mean but i'll be adding a dart to the back borders which i'll be closing so just watch the tutorial to the end to understand what i mean i do not want to add any dart to the front borders because it's a cow neck do you get so i want the front to maintain its flowing nature okay once i am done cutting out the back part i'm going to get rid of this one inch extra allowance that i added for the dart because i won't be adding any that to the front but this that's why i added the one inch separately before i go ahead to cut out my bodies i would proceed to draft out my back armhole because all i have here is the front armhole the only difference between the um, front and back armhole is the fact that we don't have to go in by 0.5 inches so what i would do at this point now is to connect from that um, 9.5 i marked earlier to that half area as you can see and that forms the back armhole that is just the difference between the back and the front armhole so so i'll go ahead to cut out the bodies one thing i will not be cutting out at this point is the neckline okay so i would cut out my back armhole note is the back armhole i cut out first we're going to situate out the front armhole okay now i'll go ahead to label this the front bodies now to draft out the back bodies the first thing we're going to do is to mark our zipper allowance and the zipper allowance i'll be using for this dress is one inch so i'll go ahead to mark one inch from beginning to the end on this pattern paper then i'll go ahead to connect the points next i'll place my front pattern on the back pattern and i'll place it right on that zipper allowance as you can see then i'll go ahead to extend the lines okay in order to get rid of zipper bulge i am going to mark 0.5 inch on the waist area okay and at the um, upper parts we are going to maintain the one inch we marked at that point so i'm going to connect from that 0.5 inch to that one inch what we are doing at this point is going to get rid of our zipper bulge not just that you know our back is not straight so um this is just going to help everything fit properly now we are going to go ahead to cut out the back bodies using the front bodies which is the main reason why we drafted the back armhole together with the front armhole to make it easier for us so i'll go ahead to trace out everything including the zipper allowance after cutting out the back pattern the next step is to trim out our front armhole on the front pattern okay so now we have our back armhole and the front armhole the next step is to work on the back bodice at this point you know the back has this opening so that is what we're going to work on at this point the first thing i'm going to do is to come down by one inch for my back neck depth okay so after coming down by one inch i'm going to use my curve driller to connect from the shoulder area to that one inch point i mean the one inch neck depth after connecting the point i will go ahead to use my scissors to trim out what i have just connected and now we are going to form the opening at the back of this dress okay so the first thing we're going to do is to use our tape rule and we're going to take 1.5 inches from the neck depth so what i'm marking out is 1.5 inches and i'm going to go in with my ruler and rule that in that 1.5 inches we just marked is going to serve as the button area the area we're going to put the button okay so i'm going to go in try to form a straight line after getting my straight line i'm going to go ahead to mark 
2.5 inches from the zipper allowance can you see i went in and i marked 2.5 inches after marking that 2.5 inches you're going to decide how wide you want your back opening to be as for me i want my back opening to be about 10.5 inches okay so i'm going to go in with my tip measure and measure from that point and when i get to 10.5 inches i am going to mark it if you don't want yours to be as wide just know you reduce it to like 10 9 8 7 but as for me i would be marking 10.5 inches after doing that on this line where i marked 10.5 inches i'm going to take my ruler and i'm going to measure five inches inward five inches inward and i'm going to rule a straight line on that point i'm going to go up by one inch and i'm going to note the one inch point and i'm going to go outward by 0 0.5 inch after going out by 0 0.5 inch then i'm going to connect from that 0 0.5 inch to the point at the top as you see me doing after doing that the next step is to form the curve at this point this curve depends on what you want it depends on how you want the curve to be like as you can see every part of this curve ruler gives a different type of curve so just do whatever you want for me i decided to come down a bit by 0 0.5 inch before connecting also do not forget to make this pointed area curvy by using your marker and i will also go in with my curved ruler to make that line you know a bit curvy okay it's still straight but just using the curved ruler before going ahead to cut out hold on guys do not cut out your pattern yet if there's something i wish i did differently that would be to put in my dart before cutting out my pattern you'll understand why in a minute so just hold on before you cut out your pattern one thing i'm going to do at this point is to take out half inch at this point and i'm going to connect that into a straight line and use my scissors to cut out that um half inch that we left is going to be what we would use to turn that part because we're going to turn that part as well before we put the buttons and yeah that's basically what we're going to do another important tip is to add 0 0.5 inch round the back opening if you do not want this back opening to be bigger once you turn the opening with another fabric so i would advise that you add 0 0.5 inch round that point if you do not want the back area to be wider than it already is the next step is to take one inch at the shoulder area take one inch off the shoulder area and um, connect that to the armhole basically then use your scissors to cut off To ensure that the front bodies and the back bodies remains equal, you also take one inch off the shoulder area, just like you did at the back, and you connected the armhole and cut off as well. We are going to be creating our cow neck using the slash and spread method. And in order to do that, from this neckline area, we are going to go down by 8.5 inches. You can decide to go down by 8, by 7.5, by 7, or by 9 inches. I think that is um, the range that is better for this particular dress. So I'm going to connect that into a straight line. And I'll go in with my scissors to slash through. Okay? I'm not going to slash to the end i'm not going to like cut through but i'm going to slash towards the armhole area very very close to the armhole area then i'm going to stop like i said earlier i don't want a dart at the front body so i'm going to go ahead to cut off the allowance i added for that for the back bodice that is what i just cut off at this point that one inch at the waist like i told you guys earlier i wish i took the dart of the back bodice before cutting out so here's what i'm going to do to you know solve the problem i created i'm going to put paper underneath it and go ahead to 
um, pull my dart. I'm going to be closing the dart of the back bodies. Um, my nipple to nipple or bust span is 7 inches. 7 divided by 2 gives me 3.5. So that's what I marked at the point. I marked 3.5 again and connected that into a straight line. The length of my dart is 5 inches. That is why it's um, I needed the extra paper. So I'll take half inch on both sides because I'm, I'm taking a 1 inch dart and I'll connect that into a um, straight line basically. So that is our dart basically. No big deal there. I'll go ahead to remove the paper underneath because now I have my dart. And I want to close this dart with um, a cello tape because I don't want to, you know, put a dart at that point. I just want to close the dart and so that it's, it's just going to make it more fitted basically. That's why I decided to add a dart at the back there. So what I'm going to do now is to get my cello tape and tape it together. After closing the dots, we would realize that the opening, this part of the opening is no longer straight and that is as a result of taking in the dots. What we're going to do is to use our curved driller or straight driller to connect the point at that point. In simple terms, just to straighten out that point so that it looks even. Now let's draft the skirt pattern and the first thing I'm going to do as regards the skirt pattern is to mark my allowance at the top of the skirt and I'm going to go ahead to mark 0.5 inch allowance at the top. This allowance is what I'm going to use to join the skirt part to the top part, I mean to the bodies. The next step is to go ahead and mark my hip point. Your hip point is your waist to the widest part of your hip and mine is 10 inches. Okay, so I'm going to mark that again to enable me to get a straight line and I'll proceed to connect the lines. I'll go ahead to label this point my hip point, okay? And I'm going to label the allowance line like I said earlier. The next step is to mark the length of the dress and if you remember, my bodice um, stops at 16.5 inches so i'm going to place that 16.5 inches on the waistline and proceed to mark the length of my dress which is 47 inches so i'll go ahead now to mark 47 inches after that i'm going to add two inches seam allowance and i marked 49 inches as the allowance line as usual i went ahead to mark them again 47 and 49 and i went ahead to connect the points and label them okay and the um, first line is my skirt length line and the other line is my allowance line which i'm going to label accordingly okay on the waistline i'm going to divide my waist circumference which is 29.5 by 4 and that gives me 7.4 inches which is exactly what i marked then i'll proceed to add one inch for that and extra one inch for my seam allowance because as usual i've been working with one inch on my hip line i'm going to divide my hip circumference by four my hip circumference is 41.5 divided by four is 10.4 which is what i marked as you can see then i'll proceed to add one inch for my seam allowance okay then i'll go over to the skirt length line and mark my hip circumference divided by four my hip circumference is 41.5 divided by four gives 10.4 so what i'm going to mark at that point is 10.4 and i'll mark the same thing on the allowance line as well we are not adding any allowance at this point i'll go ahead now to connect the lines just like you see me doing and yeah that's it basically i'll go ahead to cut out after connecting the lines now in order to cut out the back skirt pattern i will get a fresh pattern paper and mark out my zipper allowance what i'm going to mark first is two inches okay from beginning to the end and i would connect note this two inches that we just marked is not our full zipper allowance we're still going to work on it okay so i'll go ahead and place the front skirt pattern um on the back skirt pattern you know exactly how you see me placing it and i'll go ahead to extend all the important lines the waistline the hip line and the skirt length line and the allowance line the first thing i'm going to do is to ensure that the zipper allowance 
of the waistline for the bodice is equal to the zipper allowance of the waistline of the skirt pattern so what i'm going to do is to also mark half inch just like we did at the bodice area okay so everything is going to match perfectly on the hip point area i'm going to go ahead to mark 1.5 inches if you remember our zipper allowance is one inch but plus 0.5 inch allowance for the bum bum that is why i marked 1.5 so from the hip point line i'm going to come down by five inches and i'm going to rule that into a straight line okay on that line i'm going to mark one inch on the skirt length line as well i'm going to go ahead to mark one inch as well on the allowance line i would also mark one inch then proceed to connect all the points and cut out There's one more thing we need to do on our front skirt pattern and that is to eliminate the excess allowance always found at the tummy area. We'll do that by going down by 0.5 inch, okay, at the waistline, you know, then use your curved ruler to connect from that point to the side waistline, okay, um, or to the side seam area just like you see me doing. And I'll go ahead to use my scissors to cut that off. This just eliminates the excess allowance usually found at the waist area it's going to give you extra fit basically the last step in the drafting of this pattern is to add our dart and my nipple to nipple is seven seven divided by two is 3.5 so i went ahead to you know mark out my dart basically if you remember we're working with a dart of one inch because we added um one inch allowance for the dart so um that's exactly what i just went ahead to do guys we've come to the end of this tutorial um, if you're finding um, it hard to take that, I'll have a video by Viviana KK linked in the description box where she explained everything about that. Please go ahead to check out that video and you know educate yourself. Mm -hmm.